Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I'm uh, on site, so right now you may hear a little bit of background noise, but this headset's pretty good. You, sh you should be all right. So this session, what are we going to do? We are going to talk about Wireshark. We're going to talk about going through multiple files and how to efficient, efficiently and effectively create new files from them. And and just bear with me, and you'll you'll catch on to what I'm doing just in a few minutes. So the first thing is. We have a folder here and I've created a ring buffer and I just basically said after so many packets just save a file and these are relatively small but that's not the point it doesn't matter if they're a meg or 10 meg or 100 meg it doesn't matter this all works and then within this folder I created a new folder called new so if I go to new right now there's nothing there you'll find out why that's kind of important so the first thing is you've got all these files that you've captured with a ring buffer and many times you want to extract from all of those files uh, an IP address, a protocol, whatever, and it spans multiple files. So what do you do? Well one way is to take them all, merge them in Wireshark and then go through them. But if these files were huge, like 50 meg, 100 meg, 500 meg, and they were kind of mixed, after a while Wireshark becomes kind of unusable because just it's too much data. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So from the command line here, what we're going to do is I'm going to simply use some Windows uh, batch file or some commands that you would find in, in any Windows operating system. So 4% A space in. It's basically saying for all the files that are in the current folder. I'm going to put a bracket here, star dot pcap ng. So I'm basically I'm saying for all the files in this folder that meets this wildcard.pcapng, which is pretty well all of them, I could have been more specific and, and put something before the star, whatever, but this is this is good enough for what I'm doing. So what do you want to do? Every time you want a file, I want you to go run something. I want you to do T Shark, good old T Shark. So please make sure that's in your path, right? I've done other videos on how to add that to your environment variables. Dash R is read, and now here's the key. Percent A. And that is the variable that we have here. So basically if you for everything in this folder with this wildcard, I want you to run T-Shark and I want you to read that file. And I'm just going to hit enter right now. And that basically is going to open every single one of those files. This is just a test. It's not doing anything. I just want to make sure it works. So it does. So I'm going to clear my screen, pull up my last command. And now here's where a little bit of the magic happens. So the first thing you want to do is probably filter on, let's say a protocol like, I don't know, DNS. That's a popular one. So I want to go through all the files and I want to see if DNS exists in them. And again, I'll just run that simple test to make sure the filter works. And you can see there's fewer packets coming up. You can actually see the last one had no DNS packets in them. So that's kind of nice to know. Clear my screen, CLS. I'm going to pull up my last command. And now I want to add the part of it that's going to create the files for me. So dash W is right, and I'm going to go to that folder called new, and I'm going to dump a file in there, and they're all going to start. They're going to have a prefix of new underscore DNS, because that's basically what I'm looking for. And again, that A. So that variable, uh, again, is that file name as, that's being passed through here. So every time I see a file, I'm going to run T Shark. I'm going to read that file. I'm going to filter out DNS, and I'm going to create a new file in the folder new that starts with new DNS with the same file name. There. I know it looks a little kind of <laughs> obscure maybe. <laughs> Once you see it a few times it's not that bad. I can hit enter and off it goes and if you notice there's no output now right because it's creating those files for me. So if I go back to my folder here I'm going to go back to the new folder and there it is. So you can see new DNS ring. I can just double click on any one of them and as you can see they're all DNS packets right awesome let's close that off now the other thing that you're gonna probably want to do again I'm just trying to show you some of the more common things you're gonna want to do with it is we're gonna pull up the same command that we just used a moment ago and this time instead of DNS a very popular thing you're gonna use is some kind of IP address filter I don't know we'll do 888 we'll stick with the DNS theme here and this is the uh, Wireshark read, uh, I'm sorry, Wireshark display filter syntax, not the capture filter syntax. So ip.addr equal equals, and then you'll have that IP address. Again, we're going to write it to that folder new, and this time I don't want to call it new DNS because that is not a DNS thing. 
well actually it is but I want to just use a different name just for the sake of doing something different I'll do eight I don't know eight eight sure like that why not enter there you go so now if I go back to my buffer you'll see there's my new 888s there's my DNS and again in this case it's the same traffic but you're getting I'm sure you get the hang of it so the last thing is if you do have all these DNS trace files you're probably going to want to open them all now that they're a lot smaller they're manageable they're not 50 60 100 meg you can just open up Wireshark and this has been fixed recently drag those files into Wireshark you can see it says 11 let go and now all of those files have been merged within Wireshark there you go so I hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.